Well, I want to welcome everybody. I know we have a, a action-packed schedule today. Uh, welcome to the LIFPN. Um, we hold uh, bi-weekly meetings and are a growing organization of financial professionals. Um, I want to introduce uh, some of the, my board members today just to do a brief description of what they do uh, so that everybody knows who we are and what we do. Uh, Larry Bloom, now can you just want to sure. say a few words? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our meeting today. I think you're going to find the uh, presentation very informative. It's good to be back um, with our weekly programming. I'm with Bloom Show and CPAs. We're a small full service CPA firm in Jericho, working with privately controlled companies. Excellent. Larry Shearer, co founder. You're on mute. Take yourself up. There we go. Did that help? There we That's go. Better. So, good morning, everybody. My name is Larry Shearer, and I am a trust in estate and business succession attorney. What I do is try and uh, get the government out of your life, especially during the time when you're transferring property from one generation to another. Excellent. And Tim Kennedy. Hey, good morning. Tim Kennedy here from U.S. Mortgage Corporation. How are you? Uh, I'm the lender of the group. Uh, all types of mortgages, conventional FHA, and I'm also a certified reverse mortgage professional, uh, educating professionals like yourselves on the benefits of a reverse mortgage as a tax-efficient retirement income tool. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, guys. You got it. Phil? Good morning, all. Phil Kanick, CPA. I'm a partner at Nussbaum uh, Berg Klein Wolfhow, a uh, middle market CPA firm in Millsville. My specialty is business valuation, forensic accounting, and damage calculations. Um, I do a good deal of estate and uh, a trust uh, valuation work. And that's uh, one of the reasons or my connection to the group is the uh, trust and estate area. Excellent. Call on me for any valuation work uh, or questions. I don't need a client code to, uh, to answer a question. Thanks. Excellent. Teresa, are you there? Here, sorry. I couldn't be on that's video. Okay. I'm, I'm on vacation, but I'm uh, the treasurer for the organization. Um, and I do payroll, HR, and merchant services and lending. Right. Thank you. So thank you. So the LAFPN is, is a group of professionals and resources to you uh, for your business and to help you grow your business. Uh, we do education seminars. We do networking, uh, mostly virtual this year. We encourage everybody to join. You can join by going on our website and entering in. It helps pay for these events. And we continue to have great events with great speakers and want to continue onward. Uh, with that, uh, we, since we have two speakers today, I do want to get to the programming like right away. Uh, we're very fortunate this morning to have Erica Chase. Erica is part of the SBA and the SBA I found out over the last couple of years does a lot more than just small business loans. And they're very involved in PPP and other activities of small businesses and Erica is a tremendous resource and available to anybody with LAFBN who has questions or anything else. So with no further ado, Erica. Good morning. Uh, um, thank you, Neil, so much for having me. So I wanted to give you a little background on what the Small Business Development Center does in connection with um, our partnership as a resource partner of the SBA. So Congress passed many, 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 many years ago that each state had to set up a resource um, partner for the small business community. So the SBDCs, the Small Business Development Centers, um, were born out of that um, re requirement from Congress. So each state in the United States has an SBDC system. So New York State, our um, network has 23 centers and we have many outreach centers. So no small business is more than 30 minutes from a, a resource center for them to go to. So we are funded by the SBA as well as New York State. Um, most of our centers are on or affiliated with universities or college campuses through the CUNY system and the SUNY system. Um, my center is at Farmingdale State College in Farmingdale. And then we also on Long Island have another center at Stony Brook University. So we have two on in Nassau and Suffolk. And then there's Queens, Brooklyn, all throughout New York um, State. 
So we have about 200 business advisors that work for SBDC, helping small business understand the importance of a business plan, um, discovering sources of funding, and that could be an SBA product or um, not if they don't qualify for the SBA guarantee. Uh, we help uh, small businesses start. So if someone has an idea, they'll come to our center and we'll talk about their idea and how um, it's, a, if it's a viable idea, what um, you know, kind of startup uh, costs they'll need. We also have a group of um, librarians that work just for our network up in New York, in Albany. And we will pose them questions on an industry um, or demographics of an, an area. And the librarians will get the information back to us and then we'll share it with our client. Um, we help prepare small businesses with e-commerce, um, avenues for exporting goods and services. We help them develop their marketing plans, assess and in inventions um, viability. So we uh, partner with a lot of folks that are in that invention um, world and help them with patents, um, you know, protecting their idea. Um, and, the, and, and another important piece of starting a small business is really understanding the licensing and the regulations that go with that business in that area that they're in. So we help them understand what they need to do to be legal. We help them understand what registration type is best for their industry and how to register their business. Um, we help with some, um, you know, accounting questions, but we also love to be um, affiliated with groups like yours because we like to get a, 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 a book of referrals. So we can say, we have a great referral for you. Here's the name and number. We don't recommend anyone, but we certainly know that it's really important for small businesses to have partners as they grow their business. Um, our services are always free. Um, since 1985, since my center was open, we've worked directly with more than 34,000 businesses, helping them to invest over $500 million in the area's economy and helping to create or save 19,000 jobs. Um, during um, disaster, the federal government, as well as the state, looks to us to help um, small business owners navigate through whatever resources are out there to recover, um, to grow, to sustain during um, a, a pandemic like we're in now. So since March of 2020, we have helped over 1,200 small businesses access $66.7 million of the federal PPP, idle or other um, um, resources that are available to them um, to get through this pandemic. We also have been helping them create 90 day, um, you know, cash flow plans and to make sure that their business is going to survive in the next 90 days or how to expand into a different market um, to sustain while they're getting through this. So we've been really fortunate to work with a lot of folks on just surviving through this pandemic. Um, throughout New York State, as well as my center, we do free uh, workshops. All of them have been virtual um, since the pandemic. Um, and we've been doing all of our counseling um, virtually. So they connect with our center. We connect them with a business advisor, depending on their industry or what their specific needs are. We'll connect them to one of my 14 staff members. And then they'll get individualized, very uh, confidential um, advisement through their process. Um, some of the specialty programs we have and the specialty um, advisors I have, for instance, Pierre is really well versed in um, the global market. So if someone's looking to export, um, he would be our guy. Walter in my office is our invention guy. He's brought many new products to market with his clients. So he would be the person I would connect them to. I have Lauren Lanakis in my office. She came from PTAC, if you're not familiar. Um, if a small business wants to get into the procurement world and they wanna start selling to government agencies, she is the person that can help them understand what an RFP is, uh, understand what agencies are buying their product or your, their services. So they, she connects them with contracts. 
as well as helping them through the MWBE process, um, either on the federal, state, local um, um, arena. Um, I know Lisa's going to talk a lot about um, how she helps with the MWBE process, but certainly we can work as a team once she gets somebody certified and then she can refer them over to the SBDC and we can help them find uh, resources and agencies that would buy their services. So that's great. Um, so we're here for any small business, your colleagues, yourselves, um, or clients of yours to get them through whatever they're working on. And again, uh, some people come to us one time with a, a couple of questions, we help them. There's no obligation to stay with us longer. And then we have very long-term clients that will come in and out of our services where they are in their business cycle. Um, so we're here, I can answer any of your questions um, and really help you through understanding what we're here for. Um, like I said, we are a resource partner of the SBA and we are free um, to all individuals who come to um, our center. Erica, thank you so much. And again, we're gonna share Erica's information, you know, at the, you know, after this meeting as a recap, but uh, there's a lot of questions surrounding PPP and everything else. And she's extremely well-versed and extremely on top of every little change. And, uh, Thanks again, it's, uh, you're a tremendous resource and we do appreciate it. And a, and a great referral resource as well. So uh, with that, again, um, if you have questions at the end, we'll, we'll address them. Um, I do wanna to get to Lisa, who's a uh, business attorney. Uh, Lisa Duran is a business attorney in uh, New York. And today she's gonna to talk about getting certified for uh, MWBE, which is Minority Women Business What's the E for? Enterprise. Enterprise. Uh, certifications. She'll talk a little bit about the process of certification, uh, some of the pitfalls to avoid, and building and reporting requirements. That's not all what she does, but it's, it's certainly a, a specialty niche of hers. And I think it's very appropriate, especially during this time uh, that we uh, have her speak. So with that, Lisa, take it away. Oh, thank you, Neil and, and Larry and the LIA FPN for inviting me today. I, I'm happy to be here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Neil said, I'm Lisa Duran. Uh, I'm the founder and president of Duran Law PC, uh, located in Glen Cove. I help my clients do business, uh, and I wear a few hats in order to do that. One is a, as a business attorney. Um, I also help them with real estate and finance needs if they're looking, they need to negotiate a line of credit or other type of loan facility. Um, but as um, Neil said, one of the services I provide to my clients is to help them get certified as a minority and or women owned business. Um, and this can be at the New York state level uh, and it can be at the local level as Erica mentioned, uh, New York City, um, even Nassau County um, has their own certification program. Um, and it's a great time uh, for businesses to get certified. Uh, as you may know, uh, there's just a lot of priority on, on, uh, at the state level uh, and, and at the New York City level um, to um, optimize the amount of government bids that are, are given to minority or women-owned women -owned certified businesses. Um, uh, both Cuomo and de Blasio have, you know, in the past committed to, um, to allocate 30% of all uh, state or city contracts to MWBE certified uh, companies. And they are well on track with their goal. I think they're, uh, they're actually ahead of schedule. Um, in 2021, um, the state uh, had almost 30%, uh, I'm sorry, in 2019 to 2020, the state had almost 30% um, uh, of jobs given to MWBEs uh, for a total of about over $3 billion. And then similarly um, in the city, um, uh, the, the goal of 30% was to be reached this year. And I believe that again, we're ahead of schedule. And uh, de Blasio has also pledged to award uh, 25 billion uh, to MWBEs by 2025. So there's a, a real, um, a lot of support and attention out there um, 
for small businesses to take advantage of getting certified as an MWBE. Um, and so the question is, you know, why to get certified as an MWBE? Does it make sense for your business? Um, uh, and what benefits will you, will you receive from it? Um, generally, I would say that getting certified um, is, an, is a way of leveling the playing field for small businesses, um, positioning them to be able to compete with the larger uh, competitors that are out there, even to team up together, you know, uh, de Blasio has been talking a lot about this, you know, different small business owners teaming up together to bid on projects um, and, and have more opportunities by working together. Um, so it, it's, it's meant to cultivate diversity and inclusion of all types of businesses and um, to create networking opportunities and, and to give the business owners the opportunity to bid on government, government contracts. Um, in addition to that, you know, there are, as, as Erica touched upon, there are a lot of resources out there at the state, uh, the state level and, and at the local level that are available to business owners as they go through this process. Um, uh, one of them being uh, creating a vendor profile uh, before you can do apply for MWBE certification. You need to create a vendor profile on the on the New York State system. Um, and by the way, this is the uh, New York uh, State uh, contract system that you're going to be applying on. It's an online application, which I uh, help my clients with to the extent that they need help. Um, so by creating a vendor profile, and by the way, any business can create a vendor profile on, on, the, on the database. You don't have to be an MWBE. And it's a, it's a great thing to do because it's sort of like an electronic business card. You know, it, you, you create this profile, you're searchable by anybody who accesses the database. So if somebody's looking for the services or products that you provide, this is a great uh, way for them to find you. And then the reverse is true. It's a great way for you to find other vendors uh, uh, that are, you know, uh, compatible with your needs or what you're looking to do, um, and you know, primarily the big thing here is being able to access bids, and all of the bids and, and opportunities are also posted online that you can search and, and see if there's something there that's within your uh, your space, uh, and uh, and so that you can put a bid in on the process. Um, you also get access to um, support, su different support groups um, like the New York City, SBS, the small business services. Um, and you uh, have access to special lending programs that are, are, are earmarked for MWBE companies. Um, there's the Contract Financing Loan Fund, which has an interest rate cap of 3% um, that uh, could be a great resource for small business owners trying to gear up or expand. Um, in addition to the bidding process, uh, New York City also offers um, uh, sort of an easier process for, for um, projects that are, are up to 100, 500,000, excuse me, up to $500,000. Uh, it's called the uh, New York City MWBE Non-Competitive Small Purchase Method. And, uh, that's also a good resource for small businesses. Um, and also when you apply, um, say you apply for New York State certification, um, it has a one-stop uh, shopping feature where you can complete addendums that will at the same time get you certified in New York City or in the Erie County or Buffalo and uh, with the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Uh, so by completing the state application, you might as well at the same time get certified uh, in those other areas. Um, so in order to be eligible to be certified as an MWBE, there are certain criteria. Uh, you have to be in operation for at least a year and whoever the person is or persons that are the basis for your MWBE, the woman or minority, they have to have had that 51% or more interest 
and have been acting in a role, a, a substantive role of decision maker for at least a year. Uh, so uh, sometimes, you know, clients come to me and that year hasn't elapsed yet or they don't have their ducks in a row. And so uh, they have to get that year under their belt before we can move forward with certification. Um, you cannot have more than 300 employees if you are looking to be certified. Um, you have to be either uh, a business that's uh, formed in New York State or you can be formed in another state. However, you need to be qualified to do business in New York um, and, um, or, or have been certified in, your, in the other state for MWBE certification within that state. Um, your personal net worth, the personal net worth of the person that's got the, on, on whom you're uh, hanging the MWBE status can't have a personal net worth of more than $15 million. Um, this was, a, you may have read about this in the news in the last couple of years. Uh, initially that cap was $3 million and uh, the state legislature pushed to get it increased because it really became a problem for a, a lot of business owners. And uh, Cuomo actually vetoed it at first and then finally in July of 2019, um, uh, you know, authorized uh, the increase to 15 million. Uh, so I'd say the most important thing to keep in mind if, you're, if you know someone or if you are considering applying is making sure that, that your status is, is real. It, it can't just be on paper, you know? Um, the person uh, who, who you're, um, who's representing you for this status has to have real substantial and continuing control and decision-making power over the entity. Uh, it can't just look good on paper. And in, in fact, um, as part of the certification process, um, at some at one or more points, you're, that person is going to have to speak with somebody uh, from, the, from the state or the city uh, and, and talk with them about the business and really um, uh, reflect, show that they have a substantive understanding of the technical side of the business, that they, can, they are able to assess projected uh, uh, project uh, costs. Um, they really have to be prepared to be point person. So that's, that's part of the first conversation that I'll have with a client. Uh, just to make sure that this is the real deal because uh, form over substance won't cut it. Um, so the application itself, as I mentioned, it's, it's an online application and it's very um, document and information intensive. And this is where my role uh, is determined by how much help a business owner needs uh, with uh, navigating this process. You have to provide information. Uh, uh, I think there's 12 categories of information uh, in the application and you have to provide everything that's required and provide it in the right place and upload all the necessary documents. Uh, um, you have to have uh, things like a resume on the, on the MWBE uh, representative in your business that shows they have the experience and, and the um, ability to to perform the role that they're performing in the decision-making role. Um, you also have to have your charter documents, any contracts that you are a party to. Uh, you have to have um, three contracts from uh, vendors with third-party vendors. So a third-party vendor's contract with you. You have to have at least three of those from the past two years. And you need to have at least two contracts that are your contracts with third parties over the last three years. Uh, you provide information about uh, any business documents that you're a party to, your lease or deed uh, for your office. This will apply even if the business is a home office business, that's, that requirement still has to be met. Uh, you have to provide financial statements, um, proof of capital contribution, checks, bank statements, bank signature cards, tax returns. If the business hasn't been in existence for three years and therefore doesn't have three years of business tax returns, then personal tax returns will be required. Uh, uh, now, proof, proof of citizenship, gender, 
um, uh, charter, charter documents, you know, uh, when you form an entity, you get from the state, you get a filing receipt and it just looks like an innocent piece of paper, but don't lose it because if you do, it's, a, it's not easy to, to get another one. And you need that for many purposes, including this purpose. You have to provide the filing receipt that shows uh, that was issued when your entity was formed. Um, there is also something called a fast track application. That, that some applicants can take advantage of. It's, it's, as the name suggests, it's a streamlined application. You don't have to provide as much information and documentation. In order to qualify for that, you have to have been certified uh, either by Erie County, City of Buffalo, certified by, the New, by New York City, certified by the Port Authority, uh, or um, also uh, participate in the uh, federal 8A program. So if you're already certified in any one of those programs, that makes you eligible to, uh, to the fast track application. Um, so let's talk for a minute about the pitfalls uh, that business owners struggle with when they're trying to get this certification done. As I said already, it's just dealing with the mountain of information and documentation that you have to provide. Thankfully, this is electronic. I remember the days, and Erica, you, you may remember as well, when it was not electronic and you would be, um, you know, compiling and mailing this, this ream of paper, two reams of paper back and forth, uh, you know, just to apply. And, you know, anytime the, the government would come back and say, no, well, you missed this, you need that, well, that ream of, double ream of paper would be going back and forth each time. So uh, with it ele being done electronically, uh, it's, in my opinion, a lot easier. Um, but uh, things that people struggle with are proving their capital contribution, uh, you know, showing the, the canceled checks and the bank statements and uh, pr other proof of a cash injection, uh, receipts for equipment that you purchased in starting up the business. Um, I find that that's very often a problem for clients to pull all that together. Um, in, and getting their leases, deeds, licenses, permits, car registrations, all their financial statements, um, net, net worth statements. Uh, so depending on how savvy and comfortable the business owner is with, with dealing with that you know, administrative stuff will determine how much help they need from me. I'm here to help my clients to the extent that they need me to. If they're very good at that stuff, I, my role is more uh, serving as quarterback and making sure that the overall package is complete and helping them with any issues they have along the way. Other clients, they need me to do the whole, pretty much the whole process for them and basically say, okay, give me this, give me that, and, and get it all um, input or uploaded. Um, if you are a supplier business, you have to have proof of your where your warehouses are and, and you have to have an inventory list. I mean, they, the, the government really doesn't miss any corner of your, of your business life uh, and to some extent your, the personal life as part of this process. Uh, it really is uh, an onerous uh, um, you know, information uh, requirement. At least I have two questions for you. One, one, how long a process is it, A, and B, um, how's COVID affected or the pandemic affected the state's efficiency in getting things done? I know, you know, getting my house approved for a CO or something is like an endless process because people aren't working or whatever. Has that affected the whole process of application and certification? Oh, I'm looking at Erica and she's smiling as you're asking this question because that's where I was going to go next, Neil. Unfortunately, uh, and Erica, correct me if you, if you know any differently, unfortunately, the backlog at New York State to get your application, not approved, but on the desk of an analyst who's going to handle your case is at least two years. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a long time. Um, um, unless, uh, unless you can uh, apply on an expedited basis. Now, in order to do that, you have to have a, a current uh, 
project that you you're bidding on. You have to have that in you know already in the works before you apply in order to uh, request accelerated uh, pro approval. Um, it, you, and what's important is once you start the application process, you can't then after the fact try and get expedited. You have to do it upfront when you're first applying for certification. And if you don't, then uh, as far as I know, Erica, if you know any differently, please chime in. Um, you, you, you have lost that opportunity to apply for exempt uh, processing. So it's a long time. I've, I've had a, and I'm sure that COVID hasn't helped the situation, but even before COVID, that's what we're talking about. You know, and I have to tell you, I've had two clients recently who've come to me for this and I haven't heard from them. I think that two year, that two year uh, backlog is kind of a, you know, kind of pops your balloon about doing this year. You're probably, it's in your fore, forefront of your mind. And okay, I want to do this. And what do you mean I have to wait for two years <laughs> even, even to get my application looked at? So it's unfortunate. Uh, hopefully they'll allocate more resources. I mean, it, they're making this a priority uh, item, but yet they don't seem to have enough in infrastructure to, uh, uh, you know, facilitate the, the process. If, if I can add something, Lisa, to that, because um, like you said, it bursts someone's bubble. If they say two years, people will say, what's the point? <clears throat> but it really does, um, you have to be in business for a year so we tell our women-owned, minority-owned, or veteran-owned businesses, hey, put the application in and use the time between to start marketing to um, the agencies, getting to know who's going to buy what you're selling. Um, don't forget, it's only 30% that they're earmarking to these certified companies. So there's still 70% that they will buy from anyone, whether it's a woman, a minority, or a, an uncertified business. So you can still be part of that whole, um, you know, procurement world without a certification. But if, you know, like the old saying, if you're not in it, you're not gonna win it. So you might as well put the application in, let it sit there, answer the questions as they come up, um, if they're, you know, bouncing things back and eventually you'll get through the system if you're truly an MWVE, um, and, and, and you may be in a better position to be awarded contracts if you've gone through some of the contracts and procurement processes within the time that you're waiting. That's a good point. Thank you, Erica. Um, yeah, so. Um, Is there so certain anything? industries that, that, that maybe the process is going through smoother? because they're warranted industries and they're very needed, whether it's solar or green industries or, or is it just across the board? It doesn't make a difference. Uh, to my, I don't know if Eric can say differently, but to my knowledge, it's, it's across the board. One thing I wanted to emphasize though, uh, is that you know, when people think of MWBE, very often they think of, of it in the context of construction and being a, a business that's in the construction case. Uh, in, in uh, construction space rather. And that's not the case. I mean, of all types of businesses who provide all types of services and products uh, are eligible for, for this program. Uh, it's not limited to construction. I'm not aware of, of uh, any way to get to the head of the line if you're in certain green industries. Um, so, um, Erica, do you know any differently than that? No, it's really first come, first serve into the process, but Lisa touched on um, expedited services. Um, and what we have found with some of our clients that we've helped through that expedited service, even if their application has been sitting there for a year, if then they receive a contract, that agency has to request the expedited expedited um, application. It's a form that the agency has to fill out, send it up to the um, MWBE folks, and then they will, um, you know, push that along. We've seen every something from one week turnaround with an expedited application um, from the agency that they're, that they've given the contract from all the way to six more months. It really depends. And like Lisa said, there is not going to be a stone that's unturned 
through this process. Um, we really stress to our clients, look, if you're not in full control of your business as a woman, you are not going to get certified. They do not want, you know, the wife husband partnership, the wife has a full-time job outside of the business, but she, you know, helps with the bookkeeping. She is not in control of that business. Um, a lot of family-owned businesses, highly scrutinized because of that. They want to make sure that the woman is in full control, has 51% or more. Um, so it's such a long process. We really tell people, you need to do some self-reflection and see if you're truly eligible before you go through a process that you may not, you probably won't get through at the end. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That's the first conversation that I have with clients to really vet what the what reality is in terms of running the business. You know, one thing that I have encountered a number of times uh, are cl <clears throat> clients who are certified uh, being approached by other business owners who want to sort of piggyback onto that certification, get the benefit of that certification through partnering with uh, the MWBE business. And more often than not, I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, um, it's, it's really been a, a, a form over substance attempt on a part of this third party business. You know, they don't, they, they want the certification, they want the benefits of it, but they don't want to honor the control uh, and the decision-making power that, that the MWBE business owner has to have. Um, and I've just, I, more often than not, I see those types of uh, potential transactions not work out for that reason. So as somebody who, as a business owner that is certified, if you're approached uh, with this type of opportunity, it behooves you to really get to the bottom of it first and make sure that this is genuine and not just uh, an attempt to look good on paper and, and get that um, priority uh, bidding, uh, you know, ability. So um, that's, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Uh, that's sort of a nuts and bolts of the process. Anybody else have any questions? This I do want to spend the next few minutes just everybody doing like a little 10 second commercial. Uh, we don't get to meet each other enough. And I, I know we introduced the board in the beginning, but uh, some of the other people that are on the call here, if they'd like to just kind of introduce themselves and what they do, uh, you'll find that uh, we'll enhance some of these connections of, of people, uh, which is what we're all about. So uh, Ted, you want to just kind of Unmute yourself and just introduce yourself and what you do. And Good morning, everyone. Ted Mejo. I am an uh, independent general agency affiliated with Neo. Uh, we do a lot of business together. Uh, I work mostly with independent life agents and uh, property casualty agencies uh, that come to me for uh, the, our products and services. Uh, currently spending most of my time living in uh, North Carolina where it's under 30 degrees right now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Donnie Schulman. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, Donnie Schulman, BNY Mellon Wealth Management. In my role, I work with uh, our high net worth clients trying to find uh, the best solutions at the firm, whether it's helping through a liquidity event or banking needs. And on the other side of my practice, I work with endowments and foundations, uh, supporting the organization's mission while also helping them manage their endowments. Excellent. And David, I see you're adjusted there. Good morning, David Rothfeld. I'm a CPA, also a financial planner, uh, dealing with uh, small, medium clients doing the best that I can for them to help them get through this pandemic. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Stephanie, thank you. Stephanie, who's a uh, HR professor. Go ahead, Stephanie, you introduce yourself. I'm in the DC metro area. So we're waiting for our storm to come through tomorrow. 
Um, my firm provides um, custom client focused solutions to meet HR and benefit needs. So we work across the board in terms of um, industry and size. We'll work with an owner bringing on a first employee to companies that have over 10,000 employees. We like to say we're putting the human back in human resources. So you can think of CETA as an HR partner from A to Z. Thanks, Neil. Excellent. Are you geographically, uh, this is Larry Shearer, are you geographically limited or can you pick up a New York client? I have New York clients, so yes, oh. anywhere. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Erwin, Erwin uh, Cranshaw. Good morning, uh, Erwin Krasnow, Area Real Krasnow. Estate Associates. I do real estate development, um, mostly on Long Island. I'm also... Uh, friendly with uh, Larry and Lisa, so I was here to support them, and I've, you know, had the benefit of using Erica Chase's um, office and Erica Chase personally for uh, Hurricane Sandy, and more recently for the PPP, and I'm a big supporter of, you know, what they've done to help small businesses get through the process and the maze of paperwork that's involved with getting what you possibly are entitled to, but it's not an easy process and there's a lot of work and they were very good at helping me with all the documentation and making sure I did it right. And I appreciate what they have done for me in the past and continue to do for me, even in this part two of the PPP. So thank you, Erica and your staff. Thank you. Tom, Paul Mary. Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm Tom Paul Mary. I work with Forest Hills Financial Group as an insurance and investment specialist. I've known Neil for God knows how many years, and uh, it's a great meeting today, Neil. I know the, I know the owner. Thank you. Thank you. George Louis, are you, can you hear us or no? It's a guardian agent. Uh, Jeffrey Rosen, you want to say hello or you're muted? A lot of people are muted here. Uh, anybody else? Ed, Ed DeWalters, I see here. I don't know if we've met. Hi, good morning, uh, Ed DeWalters. I'm a business banker with Capital One Bank here on Long Island. Uh, I work with a portfolio of business clients and um, coincidentally, I have several several uh, MWBE clients and um, in many different industries. So Erica, to your point, it's not just construction, but um, I was referred to you, Neil, by Judy from ADP. Oh, okay, uh, terrific. Right, but great meeting, very, very informative. Thank you Excellent. for uh, inviting me. Thank you. And My Meyer Siegel, if you're there. Yes, I'm here. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm the new guy on the, on the block here. Um, I do a couple of things, a few different hats. First is um, commercial real estate. Um, it might interest the ladies that I am a very strong supporter of women in business. I've helped two women start a brand new business um, and represented them uh, to start new leases with some exceptionally difficult landlords and got them um, very reasonable lease terms so they can move their business forward. Um, I offer lots of tenant rep services for mostly emerging businesses that um, need to uh, understand how their real estate supports their business instead of it just being a transaction. Um, we can get into that a lot longer. Um, Thomas Palmieri, um, you said one buzzword that got to me of who you're working with, which is Forest Hills Financial. You and I should talk. We have a common contact. Um, I do one other thing as well. Um, uh, for Erwin Krasnow, we should talk. Um, I've helped sell land for redevelopment, and I often find buildings to repurpose, um, and I tend to lease them um, and bring in a buyer to fix them and own them. And nice. then lastly, I have um, one other business, which is IT service management for growing businesses. Um, you can easily find me on LinkedIn. Any of you with your business that has IT issues, 
um, and you need to understand more about how it supports your business, please call me. I'd be glad to talk with you and see how I can help. Thank you so much. And Michael LaGuardia, are you available to talk? Or? Yes, yes. Good morning, everybody. And, and thank you, Neil, for, uh, for the invite. Neil and I just recently were introduced and I'm um, very impressed with, uh, with this group and the information today was terrific. The speakers were wonderful. Um, I work for LPL Financial and I work with financial advisors and their clients and uh, help them like a couple of the other gentlemen on the, on the call here, help them with the uh, solutions for long-term care planning, life insurance, um, you know, a lot of wealth transfer, et cetera. And, uh, and for those of you on the call that, that have clients, well, all of you have clients that this would potentially impact, long-term care planning is something that is grossly overlooked and a great opportunity. Um, so something that, um, you know, you should find out more and, and get some resources. Um, that can assist you in that area. But but thank you again, Neil. Terrific. Thank you. And Moshe, Moshe Sisner? Yes, hi, Moshe Sisner. I'm a certified financial planner. Um, thank you for the invite for the meeting. Very You're welcome. Great. And uh, I, uh, uh, my office, my main office is in Westchester, but I have clients all over the city, all around the region. And um, uh, I do financial planning for small businesses and some high net worth clients. Uh, all my business is referrals, so I don't always control who I work with, but it's good. Uh, no complaints. And, uh, and uh, that's it. I'd like to hear more about PPP and the requirements for that for the second round. So I guess I can speak with Erica afterwards or at some point. Yeah, that would, that's fine. And we'll, we'll help, help make that connection. So, um, I did want to. I did want to conclude. Uh, I think we still have a couple of people we forgot. Uh, Eric Freed hasn't spoken. Oh, did I miss Eric? I apologize. Good morning. It's fine. That's okay. No, no, that's not fine. No, I'm okay. I'm. I'm. I'm good. Oh, one uh, of my favorite people. Good morning, then, everybody. Uh, Eric Freed. I'm a CPA with Jan over LLC offices in Garden City and my useless office on Madison Avenue. Um, which is currently still closed. Uh, I, uh, we are a full service, uh, medium sized accounting firm. Uh, concentrate my practice in uh, taxation for uh, small, medium sized businesses and high net worth individuals. I uh, tend to be uh, the financial counselor to, uh, to, to wealthy families. Thanks. Thank you, my friend. Oh, and just, uh, just one, one I'm sorry, one more thing. Just one more yeah. thing I just want to add. If, if uh, our firm has done a bunch of seminars over the last you know, month or so, you know, with regard to the updates on PPP. If anyone is interested in our, in our website, I can put it up on the chat and I'm you know, happy for everyone to you know, utilize the PPP uh, information that's on our website. Terrific, okay. thank you. Might I just uh, recommend one thing, uh, Neil? Anyone yeah. who's been skipped over, flail your arms around like this. Yeah. <laughs> No Excellent. One. Good. We got more. Listen, I, I want to encourage everybody to uh, that's not a member to join. Uh, one of the extra services that we provide is one-on-one -on -one connections with people uh, that want to meet one another. Uh, it's a very low cost to join. Uh, right now, the cost is two hundred and fifty dollars. That covers you for a year. Uh, all the money that we've raised has gone to marketing, our website, setting these things up. Uh, on a continual basis, and, it, and uh, that and the money that the board has put up has really kept us going. So uh, we appreciate it. Uh, and we're a nonprofit, and we're only helping to facilitate business for everybody, and that's our goal, and be a resource for everybody. So we have experts in every area of financial planning, and if there's anything we're missing, you let us know because uh, we're always – always look willing to learn and, and get better, so. Yeah, and uh, if you have topics that you'd like to hear about, send an email to one of the board members and we will see about addressing it. Right. Neil, I have a question on the uh, website. Can, can we automatically go into the website and, uh, and become a member? Yes. So the website is liafpn.org, O-R-G. Okay, and we go into the uh, member login or? Um, 
uh, which one of the uh, the tabs? I, I have the website open. I just want to I want to make it easy for someone. I'm sending them a link. <clears throat> um, I think that I think it's there's a way of doing it. I I'm not the expert I'm there. Sorry. sorry to put you on the spot, Neil. That's okay. Share your I screen. <laughs> I I know. You want me to share my screen? I don't know, even know how to share my screen. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to put a snowy background on. <laughs> down the bottom, down the bottom, you hit share screen, and we'll let you share the screen. It's very simple. We can all look at it together. On the home page, there's a button. Become a member. There That's you probably go. It. That's the one. <laughs> Doesn't get more straightforward than that. Yeah. Yeah. We try and make life easy. Ask and you shall receive. Done. That's how we get things done, guys. That's it. It's all good. Well, th thank you, thank you again all for, for attending. And uh, happy to see everybody. And and lots of lots of good stuff happening, good business, and one day we'll get out of this craziness. Yeah, we'll we'll meet again. We will meet again. Thank you. Thanks right. again. Have a good day, everyone. I'll see you all in two have weeks. Have a good day. Stay well, guys. Have a great week. Bye bye. You well. Right. Good job, Larry. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good Thanks, everybody. Eric and Lisa. Thank great you. Job. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye.